guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me for another video. In fact, my first video of 2018, I took a little bit of time off. I'm gonna do a vlog at the end of the week, so maybe I'll explain why I took some time off. Today, I want to talk to you about my five top tips for going vegan. Now, obviously, if you don't know, I'm sure most of you do know, but if you don't know, it is Veganuary this month, which is where you try going vegan for a month. So I know that maybe some of you are already vegan, or you're just not interested in the vegan stuff, and you just want to come for the fitness stuff, or whatever but I just think it's a really important time there's so many more people doing veganuary this year the numbers are like off the charts so I just think like any help you can give to people is wicked and if I can help you in your veganuary journey then even better so yes apologies if you are already vegan or if you already know all this stuff or if you just don't care but that's what the content is going to be two videos a week at least is going to be mostly vegan recipes vegan videos but I will throw in some vlogs and some fitness stuff for the guys who don't care. So I will refrain from my usual too much babbling and let's get straight into the tips. So tip number one is going to be establish why. What are your reasons for wanting to go vegan? Is it for your health? Is it for the environment? Is it for the animals? Is it a mixture of all of these things? Is it none of these things and just a personal challenge? You just need to establish a really firm understanding of why you want to do it. Maybe this is obvious, but I feel like once you make a connection to something and you really get into the understanding of why you're doing something, it makes it so much more likely that you're gonna to continue to do it. If you're just doing it because everyone else is doing it and you might as well go along for the ride, that's great and it obviously is gonna help, but I don't don't think you are giving yourself the best chance of going and staying vegan unless you make a solid effort to understand why you're doing it in the first place. Just a note on that though, don't feel guilty if your reason for going vegan isn't the same as your friend's reasons for going vegan or people on the internet you know who went vegan for certain reasons. Don't let anyone belittle you or make you feel like you chose the wrong reason because there is no wrong reason, we're all different. Whatever you feel makes you really passionate about trying veganism, that is the best thing to be interested in and research more into. And that leads me very nicely onto my next point, which is point number two, do your research. Now I know that can sound a little bit intimidating sometimes to people because there's just so much information out there nowadays it seems impossible to know who to look at, what to look at, what to read, what to watch. But to be honest in terms of veganuary you don't need to go crazy I don't think but you do just need to know a few things and maybe put a little bit of research in so that you don't fall for the pitfalls that a lot of people do when they try and go vegan. And like I was saying in point one if you have a very specific thing a reason for going vegan in the first place maybe start there in terms of your research. So if you've gone vegan for the animals, it'll be really good to watch some documentaries like Cowspiracy and Earthlings just to really further um, push that stuff into your brain and really provide you with information as to why you're making this choice. Or if it's more environmental reasons, then obviously you can watch something like Cowspiracy or to be honest, I don't want to list them all here, any all the reasons and things you should watch, but I'm going to leave some stuff in the description box down below that you can look at my favorite resources for the different reasons for going vegan, which videos correspond with which reasons why. But not only do you want to do your research in terms of like just, I don't know, learning more about veganism and learning more about the things you're going to need to do, you also might want to research into the things that are going to make your day-to-day -day life that much easier. So for instance, before you begin, for example, you're probably going to want to pick up a B12 supplement. You probably hear vegans talking about this supplement all the time, but it is something that's really good to take if you are going vegan in the month of January and just for vegans in general. Also, it's really good to research maybe what vegan restaurants are in your area or restaurants that have vegan options within your area because there probably will be days where you just don't know what you want to cook or you don't want to cook and if you don't have options readily available you're probably going to go for your old non-vegan options which you don't want to do in veganuary so yeah just do some research make sure you know in your area where are the places you can go to get nice vegan food and yeah i think that's enough about point number two tip number three is going to be be prepared for some negativity oh my god do you think you're too good for us now or something where are you gonna get your protein oh I don't know how you're doing it. I could just never go vegan. You're so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. So, whilst it seems we're going through a bit of a shift, especially like within the last year, in terms of people going vegan, it's mad how, cra how crazily fast the vegan movement is growing. And while that is the case, and so most of the time actually this isn't a problem, I will say for most people that you will find you get some negativity. Be that from your friends, family, work colleagues, whatever it is, you're probably at some point in this veganuary journey going to face up to people who just are not happy with what you're doing. And if you're someone who's sort of quite easy to 
coerced into stopping doing something that you've planned to do, or you're just not someone who finds committing to something and sticking with it very easy, then I find that actually peer pressure can be a really tricky thing to deal with. And it can definitely be one of those things that just suddenly just gets too much and it diverts you away from what you want to do. So for this one, I would say point number two is really helpful. If you've done your research and you know why you're doing it and you know how to do it and you know all the good things about why you're doing it, then it's going to be that much easier to say to people, look, this is just my choice. This is what I want to do. It's only for a month. You know, just anything you want to say. And I will say, um, I don't know if I'm going to get a little bit of crap in the comment section for this, but when I first went vegan, actually, I was very kind of, I don't know, I wasn't one of those out and loud and proud vegans at the beginning. And I often would say like, oh, I'm just doing it for an experiment or I'm just trying it for a month. And people are actually much more welcome to that. They don't seem to give you as much crap if you just say, oh, I'm just trying it out. So don't feel like you have to jump in all guns blazing first saying, well, do you know this about cows and this about slaughterhouses and this about the dairy industry? I mean, by all means you can if you want, but just try and say, I'm, you know, I'm doing it as an experiment. I actually feel really good um, at the moment. So it's working for me maybe just try and pass it off as something so you don't get into a big debate. And if you can find a positive way to do that, that's awesome. I think it's great. The more that we share this message, the more it will grow, yada, yada, yada. But just a tip so that people around you don't suddenly turn against you in this month of Veganuary, just try and keep it positive. Like I said, try and just keep it airy-fairy. You're doing it as a challenge, da, 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 da. If you want to say it makes you feel good or you've been doing some research into animal agriculture or animal cruelty, then fine, do. You know, who am I to tell you what to do? But I just think if you can, just try and keep it positive. Try not to talk about it too much because the last thing you want to do is you feel great, but you alienate everyone else around you and they don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> so number three was be prepared for some negativity. And number four is going to be just be prepared in general. So earlier I said you might want to get your hands on a B12 supplement just to help you out maybe. If you haven't seen them before, you don't know which one to get. I use this one. Uh, it is My Kind Organics. The brand is Garden of Life actually. And it's just a B12 organic spray. It tastes really good, which for me is important because I'm terrible at taking supplements. I just don't remember or I can't be bothered. But if it tastes good, it's kind of like a treat to me. <sighs> God, what a loser. Um, but it is, it's kind of like a treat to me. So I will take it on a daily basis if it tastes good and this one does. Also, if you are gonna be out and about, being prepared in that way helps too. So make sure you always have a vegan snack handy to you. Can't tell you the number of times when I first went vegan that I was caught out, out and about. I didn't know anywhere that did a vegan option. I mean, that's less so the case nowadays because loads of places do, but sometimes you just can't find something vegan and you're starving hungry. And if you're only just turning vegan now, that might be the point that will break you where you're just so starving hungry, you'll eat anything and you turn to something that is non-vegan. So I would say just always have a snack in your bag just in case, a piece of fruit, a naked bar, just, well, anything basically that you can snack on, a bag of nuts, anything for when you are starving hungry and you don't want to reach for something that is not vegan. Also, in terms of being prepared, if you can be bothered, then meal prep is a great thing to do because at the beginning, you're probably just gonna be really tired of thinking up new ideas for vegan recipes you can cook if you're not used to cooking them. But if you can find some meals that you really enjoy and you can prep them ahead of time, then they're so easy just to take and grab and go for when, I don't know, if you work a nine to five or something, it can generally be a little bit difficult in the beginning to find vegan options in the places that you may have usually grabbed lunch from. So if you can do a bit of meal prep in advance, it's always gonna be a good thing. Anyway, I think you get the gist of being prepared in general, so I may just move on to point number five. Okay, so the last point, and that is point number five, is gonna be make sure you have to hand, or in a little collection in your blogosphere or whatever, make sure you have readily available a wide choice of recipes that you can make, things that maybe you liked non-vegan that you can veganize. You can find so many good recipe videos and recipes of things that people have done that are sort of like comfort foods from when you were a meat eater to veganize them. So like I said, I'll put some in the description box down below. And also a cheeky plug, I have loads of recipes on my channel already, which I'm gonna put into a playlist for you guys if that helps you out. And also I'm gonna do loads of recipes in this coming month of Veganuary. And in fact, my next video is going to be three breakfast ideas. So basically, sneaky little plug there, but <laughs> subscribe to my channel if you're not already, if you want lots more delicious, tasty vegan options. Oh, and in fact, a little extra to point number five. Not only do you want to equip yourself with loads of great recipes that are vegan, I think you should also try and equip everything. Like, basically make sure that your cupboards are packed full of things you can have that are vegan. Try to get rid of your non-vegan things, or at least keep them out of sight, because like I said, if you're going to be super hungry one day and you're having cravings for stuff, it's gonna be so much less likely that you will actually 
give in to them if they're not there to give in to in the first place. So yeah, try and get rid of your other tempting non-vegan stuff and try and pack your cupboards and fridge full of super exciting vegan food that looks interesting, that looks appealing to you because that's just gonna be something that's gonna keep you on track for the whole month. And hopefully more than the whole month. Hopefully you feel so good and you're so inspired and the food is so delicious and tasty that you stay vegan for the long haul. So, we are finally at the end of the video. Thank you so much if you have joined me for this video and watched the whole way through. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to give it a little like. And if you want to, like I said before, do click that subscribe button because I am planning to upload like a freaking machine this year, that is 2018. And if you are someone who has found my channel because you are researching into Veganuary and doing Veganuary, then please, any questions you have, not just on this video, but on all my videos this month, please do leave them in the comments down below. I reply to all my comments, so if you're stuck with anything, or if you just, I don't know, want to talk to someone, basically, if you have any questions or qualms, then stick them in the comments section down below for the whole month of January, and actually for the whole of forever, because caring is sharing. So, I think you've probably had enough of my face and of my mindless rambling. Well, not mindless, it was mindful, but <laughs> it was rambling a little bit nonetheless. So I'll bid you farewell, and I will see you in a few days time for my three top vegan easy breakfast recipes, and I will see you in the next video.